to TransLogic. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Today we're at the EAA Air Venture Show, along with half a million people and 10,000 aircraft. This giant celebration is ground zero for the future of aviation. So if you've got something new to flaunt and it flies, you're here. And so are we. All right, so we are here with Eric from Greenwing. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, glad to be here. So this company is only six months old and you guys only started selling these three days ago. So exactly. this is infancy. The program's been around for more than five years. It's time to get these out there. It's time for people to experience electric flight. This costs about $1.60 an hour in electricity to operate. That's far lower than any <laughs> anything any around here. Anywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, it's quiet. This is quieter on its takeoff roll than our conversation is now. Wow. 51 decibels. You don't have the vibration, you don't have the noise, you can even hear what's going on around you, you can hear what's going on on the ground as you fly over it, which is something that most pilots have never experienced before. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you guys have this plane? You also have another one. Tell that's me about correct. that. We have the E430, that's a two-seat composite plane, really sleek looking aerodynamic plane. It's very efficient and that was purpose designed for electric propulsion. Serial number eight in that program was just cleared by the FAA to fly out in California. So we're now entering the flight testing for the final version of that. We expect to make deliveries in 2014, and we expect that to be flying later this week in the LA area in the US. All right, so we're here with Andrew Broom from Honda Aircraft Company. Andrew, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. How was it that Honda decided to get into the aircraft game? You know, when Honda comes to a market, they don't create something like what's on the market. They want to change that market. This aircraft is very slick on the fuselage. It's a, it's a carbon fiber fuselage. Second of all, it's a natural laminar flow fuselage nose and wing. The air is disrupted less, flies it's better smoother, through the sky, much right? smoother. And then you add in the very distinctive feature, which is the over the wing engine mount, what right. we call OTWIM. Over the wing engine mount is a real breakthrough with the optimum placement of that engine, it reduces wave drag at high speed. So it allows us to go faster, higher, and more efficiently compared to any other aircraft in our class. Well then the other thing that happens is because you don't have a structure going through that fuselage, you can make the cabin bigger. Right, much there's more, more room comfortable. back there, yeah. Yeah, you have more leg room, you have more luggage space. In our flight test fleet, we have what are called FAA conforming aircraft. That means that we can go do certification work on them, but we still have certification testing that we have to do. And the big milestone to us was this was the first public appearance of an FAA conforming aircraft. And not only did we bring one, we brought two, and we flew them in the air show in a tandem app. I remember hearing about the Honda Jet a couple years back. It's really taking some time to come to market. What's up with the delays with that? Well, let's put this into perspective. Okay. For an all new company to create an all new jet, the last company to do that successfully was 40 years ago, and that was Learjet. We have a 133 acre campus in Greensboro, North Carolina, where we're building the aircraft, where we're gonna service the aircraft, where all the engineering is. We are building a company that's gonna sustain and be around for a long time. All right, so we are here with Yves Rossi, the jet man. Thanks again for uh, being with us. We Thank saw you. you about a year and a half ago. Yeah. What have you been up to the past couple years? In Rio de Janeiro. Yes. It was a fantastic flight, fantastic yes. place, really a magic place. Have you made any adjustments to the suit in the past couple years or the engines or anything uh, like that? No, we did just really work a lot on reliability, especially on tanks, pumps, filters. This I did work also to instruct uh, my first student. Oh, so, you're raising up yeah, an army, one, huh? One month ago, he did his first motorized flight, but okay. after 60 glider flights without okay. engines. Right. And the next step for next year, it's... Side uh, by side? Side by side, you know, That's playing uh, around the clouds. Yeah, yeah. To Jetman, Jetman Squadron. <laughs> 
This show was your first official public, public appearance yes. in America. Very exciting that uh, Super Bowl of Aviation. Yeah, absolutely. That's, this is massive. That's many of these people are experimental, like right, the experimental right. EAA, huh? right, Aircraft right. Association. I am also experimental in my development and uh, that's really gratifying to share. These are really people from the from the base where you create, not yeah. where you regulate. So yeah. that's not a big stop, that's creation here. And that's and very that's exciting. And that's a very good energy. Definitely. So we're here with John McGinnis, the founder and creator of Synergy. John, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Riley. Tell me a little bit about your background and how we are here today talking about a new type of plane. Oh, I invented an awesome airplane. It's called Synergy. It's the world's first double box tail airplane. And we're in the process of building the full size model, but for the last few years I've been teaching the ingredients of Synergy to the EAA audience. It's been followed worldwide because it's a massive drag reduction, makes for quiet, roomy, and comfortable fuel efficient aircraft of the future. So essentially you took what would be a wing and then just kind of curled it up on itself. That's a very good way of looking at it, actually. Turns out when you put the tails above and behind the wingtips and you cause them to push really hard against the atmosphere, they reduce what's called the induced drag. You get the same benefit as if you had a longer wingspan. But we don't have the penalty of a longer wingspan. We can go fast, we can carry a lot of weight, we can fly a long range, we can fly at high altitude, and it's all very, very stable and highly responsive. All right, so we're here with Paolo, the CEO of Nimbus. Paolo, thanks so much for being with us. It's my pleasure. Tell me a little bit about this aircraft and about the company. The company is an Italian company, as you can understand from my very bad <laughs> English. <laughs> no, it's and good, it's good. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. This is a manned aircraft, which means that the pilot is a remote pilot. You can have different gimbal and uh, high resolution cameras, infrared, thermal information, and maybe also multispectral information. So you can not only see a man that is lost in the wood, but also identify different uh, material, some oil spilling out from a pipeline. Oh, wow, okay. Five meters, maybe it's 20 feet, something like that, okay, yep. is enough to take off and the same to land. Or even, if you want, you can land straight in the point. You can work in a kind of a super stall condition. It means you stay almost fixed in the air oh, and you wow. go down very, very slow. That's really cool. We not only have the patent, but we have the know-how how to make it bigger in a managed version with a bigger dimension. Maybe here we can find a partner throw a little bit of extra money in there and make the yes. whole thing bigger. All right, it's been a fantastic time here at Air Venture. We've only scratched the surface and we've been here all day. With the kind of innovations that we discovered, you can see how this event's been around for more than 60 years. And as long as people continue to fly in new and exciting ways, it'll be around for another 60. All right, for Translogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time.